the old town of Nablus in the West Bank. Shirin Nazal is a social worker. She is visiting families in villages south of Nablus where there are many Israeli settlements. Shirin encounters the same stress and anxiety during all her visits. They are very tired because they couldn't sleep in the night. They, there is shift in the houses. The mother, when she is wake up, the father is sleeping. And after that, the father wake up, the mother is sleeping because they are worried from the settlers to go and to burn their house and uh, or broke the house. That's how life is in the occupied Palestinian territories. Everyone here remembers the 18-month-old boy who was killed when Israeli settlers set fire to his home. That was back in July. The incident has deeply affected Wissam Asaye's patients. The people watch TVs to follow the, the news, what's happened here and there, especially on the checkpoints near the settlements, uh, the clashes with, with the soldiers and the settlers, a lot of injuries, a lot of uh, killed people, martyrs, uh, a lot of arrestation, high numbers than compared with the other months. Um, the people now uh, uh, follow all these news and uh, start to have more anxiety, more sleeping disorders. The children uh, focus with the families also on the news and uh, it affects their concentration and their school performance. In the past few months, the violence has increased yet again and the repression is even more merciless. The people aren't sleeping properly, not only because of nightmares, but also because of the Israeli soldiers who storm into their homes day or night to interrogate and arrest them, including adolescents like this boy who was arrested for throwing stones. For young people, um, they experience these daily humiliations. Their, their economic futures are, are really shortened in comparison to, to other adolescents. Um, they watch their fathers and mothers humiliated. Um, they're, they're targeted for no reason other than their appearance. And watching this day after day, you know, you can imagine um, for any young person how that might really get you down. And, you know, you combine that with, you know, impulsivity um, and maybe a tendency to, to answer back or to fight back. The consequences can be deadly. Offering support to those suffering from trauma caused by a conflict they're powerless to do anything about, such as the daily task of the psychologists, social workers and doctors working on the MSF's program. Every day, volunteers come from France and neighbouring countries to help the refugees in the north of France to do what the state quite simply isn't doing. I bring food given to us by shops. The people here are from Sudan, Eritrea and Ethiopia. There is nothing to fear from them. All you will get from them is their smiles and their friendship. For about six weeks now, I've been working on allocating the building. Uh, we work with MSF. The most important thing is that there's a real perception in England that not, m and not enough uh, resources are being expended by the government to help refugee refugees all around the world. Uh, and so ordinary people, I think especially in England, have decided that it's their responsibility, it's their duty to, to help people. This refugee from Pakistan is a nurse. He's been living in the jungle in Calais for six weeks. He helps treat the injured. Something happened all the time happening is a night time and uh, police uh, putting tear gas on a refugees when he attempt to cross border. So at that time must be need somebody there who will be care in uh, the injured patient. Médecins Sans Frontières is also providing medical care in Calais and constructing shelters made of wood. The 1,500 accommodation places the government has promised are long in coming. Work on them has only just begun. As is the case across Kabul, the population in Dashti Bashi has exploded and over one million people are now living in this neighborhood.
Private clinics here charge $90 for a normal delivery and $700 for a caesarean, a huge amount most families simply cannot afford. Did she lay flat for 12 hours? Uh, how can I do this? MSF has set up a fully equipped emergency obstetrics unit to help reduce mother and child mortality. We tell them the baby is too big and it's not coming down. So we have tried everything, we're going to do a science section. Okay. The 45 bed facility has an intensive care unit for mothers and newborns an inpatient ward and an operating theatre for caesareans. There's an average of 800 deliveries at the Dashti Bashti Maternity Centre every month. I think, um, I think there's a tendency to see all the refugees as, as this uniform mass and like just like one type of person. Uh, you've got people from all over the world uh, who've got lots of different stories and lots of things they're running away from. Um, the majority of the people we saw were coming from Syria and Iraq and their stories were very similar. Depending on where they came from inside Syria or Iraq, they're very, very similar stories. But the people themselves were all very different. Um, so you would see sort of like hipsters with piercings and tattoos. At the same time, you'd see people who lost all of their money in the water uh, in Greece. Um, you'd see people who would make jokes about how climbing through uh, parts of Greece and Macedonia was like the sound of music. Um, so for me, I think what strikes me is just they all kind of share the same path, but with very different stories leading up and very different perspectives on, on the whole uh, experience. Um, but what is uniform is this idea that it's supposed to be better uh, at the end, um, whether they're going to Germany or whether they think that they're going to meet family in Belgium or, or wherever they want to end up. The idea is that we're, we're all heading there. Um, and yeah, and that, that's the one thing I think that ties them together. But otherwise, it's a, a hugely different, uh, a very heterogeneous like population. Um, but all with this very intense sense of hope.